Good morning. Happy Thanksgiving Eve. It is wild to think tomorrow is Thanksgiving and how blessed and thankful we are of all people to say thank you Jesus. Thank you Lord. Thank you Father, Son, and Holy Ghost for all of your gifts and even for the trials. He is so faithful to complete that work he started in us. He's faithful to carry us through though the waves come and the storm blows and we're scared and we're weary and we're depleted and exhausted and our muscles ache and our heart aches. We're not crushed. We are not squashed because the Lord our God is faithful. And so I was reading in James this morning, James chapter 5, and it's one of my favorite books. Excuse me, one of my favorite chapters of the whole Bible because it talks about prayer. Confess your trespasses one to another. Pray for one another. The effective fervent prayer of the righteous avails much. Avails much. Reaches much. Accomplishes much. So I was reading once in a in a book, and the pastor was saying that there's there's nothing in the Bible about unanswered prayer. God always answers our prayers. So we sometimes get confused because we say, well, Laura, if that's true, that God always answers prayer, well, how come so-and-so, you know, died and they never accepted the Lord? Or why did this tragedy happen? Or why hasn't God taken COVID away? Or why do we still have horrible, uh, ungodly people in office? Why, why, why? Well, you know, remember, we only see through a glass dimly. We have imperfect information. But God knows all, sees all, and he's above all. So I'm going to say the James verse again. Confess your trespass to one another. Pray for one another. The effective, fervent prayer of the righteous man, righteous woman avails much. So our goal in prayer, all of these times, all of these opportunities to pray, whether it's like right now with me, or whether it's in your secret prayer closet at home, with your head bowed over your Bible, maybe you go on a prayer walk like Sandy and Elena, Maybe you walk and pray like Isaac and I. Um, whatever times you're praying and you're talking to God, maybe you're journaling your prayers and you're even writing down. The whole point is not, aha, God answered this one. Oh, he didn't answer that one. Wonderful, he answered this one. But oh, he didn't answer that one. You know, this is not a, a sporting event. Prayer is not for the faint hearted because, you know, in the Bible, there's prophets that moved to other lands and never saw one single convert. Does that mean their ministry was ineffective? No, because if they're in the Bible, they're there for a reason. You know, Job had all of his children killed, every part of his livelihood taken away, his health, his um, children, his livestock. He had so many things stripped from him. And even his own body, he even had you know, uh, sores all over his body. He, Job went through so much. Did God not hear Job's prayers? You know, his children were not resurrected. He buried them. You know, right now there's a lot of people around us passing away and these funerals are exhausting. Imagine he had to do a, you know, a service for all of his children. I just can't even imagine. I don't want to imagine exact in, in fact, but the point of it is that the Bible says the effective fervent prayer of the righteous avails much. That doesn't mean that the prayers will all be answered in the way that we want them to be answered. You know, I remember one time years ago, I had a friend from Bible study and her husband um, was deceived by the, by Satan and he fell in love with the coworker and the coworker lived overseas in a foreign country. And the man said, I am going to buy a plane ticket and I'm going overseas to meet this woman of my dreams. I'm in love with her. I'm leaving you. I'll be filing for a divorce. You'll be getting the paperwork shortly. And a bunch of us women, uh, sisters of this friend, we prayed and we prayed and we prayed. And I prayed many things. I prayed that the airplane would not work. I prayed that he would get so sick he wouldn't be able to travel abroad. I prayed that he'd get there and it would be a, a, a big joke that that woman that he was supposed to supposedly so in love with would never show up. I prayed so many things and he did get on the plane and he did go overseas 
and he did meet this woman and he did commit adultery and he did leave my friend and file for divorce and so what gives god this these were good prayers please lord stop this man from committing these acts but remember there's one thing that god is not going to do and it's cancel out our free will we have free will so when we're praying for somebody's salvation remember god is going to do everything in his power he's going to put godly people in their path he is going to prompt them speak to their hearts maybe give them a dream give them a vision give them trials he's going to do all of these things but they still have free will so while we live in a broken world we may not get our prayers answered the way that we Mama. hoped Mama. but it doesn't mean our prayers are not availing much they are availing much God is faithful, you guys. Before Isaac could talk, he was totally nonverbal. He couldn't say one word, friends. Not one word. My son, right here. Totally nonverbal, autistic little boy. Adorable little boy. And I would pray, and I would pray, Lord, give him words. Lord, give him speech. Lord, loose his tongue. Lord, help him talk. And I remember one time the enemy whispered, but what if he doesn't, Laura? What if he never talks? Then what? And I said, then God's going to use him with his smile. God's going to use him in sign language. Because the Bible says that everything that has breath, praise the Lord. So even a nonverbal autistic kid can praise the Lord. Amen? So I just want to encourage you, don't stop praying. Even if you feel like your prayers are not getting answered or like God keeps saying no. The psalm says, delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. The more you're praying, the more you're getting close to Jesus. Reading your Bible, talking to other godly men, godly women, listening to Christian teachings on the radio, on YouTube, on your phone, in your car. The Lord's going to change your prayers and he's going to mold them in alignment with Jesus. And remember, Jesus said in the garden, if it is possible, take this cup for me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And Father, that is exactly what we want to pray. Not my will, your will be done, dear God. Not Laura's will, your will be done. Not Chuck's will, your will be done, God. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, King Jesus. We go through this life and it's exhausting. And we go through many trials. And like Dr. Tony Evans said, when Peter looked at the waves, he started to sink. But when he locked eyes with Jesus... He walked above on top of the waves. It's not about the storm. The storm did not cease. It's about who are we locking eyes with? The boisterous waves or our King Jesus? Lord, you're the King of the world. I love that song that says, why did I forget that you've always been the King of the world? You were the King on the throne above all planets, above all galaxies, above the stratosphere. You're the King of our hearts and you're above everything, Lord Jesus. And you saw fit to save us. Lord, you opened our eyes out of darkness into your marvelous light and you showed us truth that set us free. Thank you. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for heaven. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for the promises that you are the yes and the amen. Thank you for the thousands upon thousands of promises in the Bible that you will never leave us nor forsake us. That if we ask, seek and knock, you hear and it will be open unto us. But thank you for your promise that you're the bread of life and the living water. Thank you that you are the same, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today and forever. Thank you that you're the bridegroom coming again. So many prophecies talk about your second coming, Jesus. We can't wait. We eagerly await your second coming. We want you to come today, even before Thanksgiving, even before that timer dings on the oven when the turkey is completed. We want your return. We want you, Jesus, more than we want our cup of coffee in the morning. We want you, Jesus, more than we want our unanswered prayer. We want you more because you are our God, our creator, our maker. The Lord your God is your name. You are Elohim, creator God. You're Al Shaddai. You're Jehovah Nisi. You're Hashem, the name above all names. You're Al Che, the living God. You are Al Roy, the God who sees us. Jehovah Sidkenu, the Lord, our righteousness. You're the just judge, the ancient of days. You're holy. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. You are the lion and the lamb. You are the God of Jacob, the God of Abraham, 
Isaac and Jacob, the God of people. You are the lover of our souls, kind and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. You're faithful and true. You are the word of God, the logos. You're the rima. You speak to us specific words for a specific hour, for a specific moment. You're so personal. You're so faithful. You're so loving and kind and matchless and holy and wonderful. You're altogether lovely. You're the balm and Gilead, the rose and Sharon. You are the one that we sing out, give thanks with the grateful heart give thanks to the holy one give thanks because he's given jesus christ his son and now let the weak say i am strong let the poor say i am rich because of what the lord has done for us we just want to say thank you and we That's just praise you for all that you've done you did give my son speech he can talk jesus loves me jesus loves me isaac so much Isaac knows that Jesus loves him so much. Do we? Thank you for the victories that you've provided. Thank you for the victories that are on their way. Thank you for Pastor sound God. doctrine. Thank you for yes. all of our churches, our pastors, our pastor's wives that we love. And thank you for them. Thank you for intercessory prayer. Thank you for being our priest that you live to make intercession for us. Forgive us of our sins, God. They are many. They are many. We have pride. We have selfish desires. We have ugly, lustful thoughts. We have uh, battles and wars. We have besetting sins. So many yucky things in our thoughts, in our mind, in our hearts, and worry. Oh, Father, we are plagued with worry. We worry ourselves to sleep. We worry ourselves sick. Some of us even worry ourselves to death. May it never be so. Lord, we, worry has no place in the Christian's heart. No place. We don't need to worry. Because you're in control, be anxious for nothing, but in all things by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, we will let our requests be made known to you. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And Lord, so forgive us of all of our sins. Cleanse our hearts, God. Cleanse our hearts. Make us vessels of honor, not dishonor. We don't want to be a broken styrofoam cup with poked holes in it. We want to be a, a beautiful goblet. We want to be a, a, a English beautiful priceless uh teacup that queen of elizabeth used we want to be a vessel of honor jesus not of dishonor not discarded uh plate or cup we want to be of use for you jesus you are the potter we are the clay use us lord use us to the last drop lord we know that this world is passing away we know that the days are are numbered lord Teach us to number our days of right that we may gain a heart of wisdom. I pray for Thanksgiving. I pray you would bless all of the gatherings tomorrow. I pray you would bless each and every person praying with me right now. And each and every family member represented. And the God, lost, God. the prodigals, the backslidden, those in homosexual activity, fornicators, Lord. Those that have left their families. Those have abandoned their families. Those that hate you, God. Those that say they're atheists, agnostic. I pray for their souls. Our family members, God. The ones we love dear. God, we share the DNA with some of these people. We pray for their souls. Save now, Hosanna in the highest. And I pray for the grieving, for Vivian, and for so many who've lost loved ones. And Thanksgiving is going to be tough. But you are the guest of honor, Lord. And we praise you, Father, that, Lord, you said... Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Comfort the Palacios family, the Regay family, the Kruger family. Lord, my friend Tim is so sick with cancer. It's all over him, God. He's so sick. Chuck saw him yesterday, and he's just weak from radiation. Would you touch him and heal his body? Would you be with our churches and our friends and our family, especially those who are sick and need you? They need a touch from you. Revive our hearts in these years. I pray for Adil. Open his eyes that he may see you, that he may know you, that he may call in the name of the Lord and be saved. I pray for Tommy. Keep him on the direct trajectory of your heart lord that he would not want drugs and alcohol but he would want you and so many others we can pray for the lost the backslidden the mentally ill those wrestling with anxiety and depression you know them by name i lift them up to you in my heart silently though by name <sighs> father we are praying silently but we know you hear us openly lord 
forgive us of our sins. We praise you. We worship you. We need you. And we just give you thanks with a grateful heart. Bless our Thanksgiving time today and tomorrow as we gather together. Lord, it's not about the turkey. It's not about the food. It's not about the Black Friday shopping. It's not about the beautiful um, plates and, and, and side dishes and even games and laughter and football. It's not, it's not about that. Those things are wonderful. It's about you, Jesus. Would you be the guest of honor, the head of every household, as we give thanks for all of your blessings? You bless us more than we deserve, and by your grace, we are saved, and we're so incredibly, eternally thankful. In Jesus' name, amen.